If you don't have a pizza stone, you can always use a standard jelly roll, baking sheet, cookie sheet, depending on whatever you want to call it. It's essentially a 12 by 15 pan. Put a couple of tablespoons of olive oil on the pan, rub it around, making sure you coat all the edges, including the sides, and then dump your bread dough directly into the pan. You can spread this around a little bit, making sure you keep oil on both your hands. Spread this around a little bit, and then let it rise. The yeast is really working in here, and you can see lots of big bubbles forming. What I do is I take a, a fork and poke the dough, the top of the dough, about 20 or 30 times. This does two things. It pops a lot of these big bubbles, which makes it easier to, to bake, but also it gives us a spot for, to, to target when we're putting in the kosher salt in the next step. While this is rising, we'll take just some regular old kosher salt. Uh, this is a kosher sea salt I, I really like because it's got some additional minerals you wouldn't find in a traditional straight kosher salt. Uh, sea salt will include uh, anything from phosphorus, manganese, sulfur, magnesium, calcium, potassium, which alters the flavor of the salt. In fact, uh, a true salt taster can give you an idea where the salt came from just by tasting it. What we'll do, take about a, about a tablespoon of salt and sprinkle it over the top of your dough. Once our oven hits 450 degrees, we'll throw it in. We'll let it cook for 10 to 15 minutes and then add some uh, spices on the top of it. It's going to take 20 to 30 minutes for this to cook. Watch for it to turn golden brown. We don't want, to go, we don't want it to go too long because to this particular bread, we're going to be adding rosemary on the top. If we add the rosemary in the beginning, it'll actually scorch and, and make the flavor of the rosemary turn sour. So we'll wait till there's about 10 minutes left in the cooking and sprinkle some rosemary on the top of the bread. While the bread's cooking, this is a great time to tackle all the dishes that were, we used during this. Uh, the sticky dough, it's important that you, it takes a while. If you let it get hard, you'll be scrubbing all day. Therefore, when I'm done with the bowl, the, immediately I put it in the sink and fill it with water. It makes it a lot easier to clean. Of particular importance while you are cleaning is your mixing bowl. What happens if you don't get all the oils out of the inside of this, and we used a lot in this recipe, uh, next time you try to make a meringue or whipped cream, the oil is going to make it so you can whip and whip and whip those things for days and they will never ever form stiff peaks. When there's five to ten minutes left, I like to take a little rosemary. Now I got this just in the backyard, uh, cleaned it, pulled off about a, a six inch stem per, uh, per loaf. What I do is I strip all the leaves off, but I leave the shoot in the middle of those. That's kind of woody and I don't like wood on my uh, I don't like wood on my focaccia bread. With about five minutes left, it's a good time to sprinkle some rosemary on the top of your focaccia. If you add it, if you add it sooner than that, it'll burn. Uh, if you add it later, it just it, 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 it doesn't look as good. We're starting to see a little bit of browning on our uh, bread on the baking stone. And we're also seeing a little browning on the bottom uh, of the one we did in the cookie sheet. What we're going to do is we're going to switch the top to the bottom so that this particular one will get more browning on top and less browning on the bottom. Every once in a while I like to take a peek just to see how it's going. And i got to tell you, it smells fantastic. The bread is starting to brown on the top. Uh, some people call that caramelization, but, which there is some of that taking place. But it's also called the Maillard reaction, M-A-I-L-L-A-R-D. Uh, the difference between caramelization and Maillard, caramelization is just sugar, and it occurs at higher temperatures, which there are sufficient temperature here to create caramelization. Maillard, however, takes place whenever you've got protein and carbohydrates, i.e. olive oil and flour. The, the Maillard reaction takes place at lower temperatures, and creates more esters traditionally in caramelization. Uh, caramelization will give you a bitter yet caramely flavor, why it's called caramelization, whereas the, break, the baked bread smell is more of a Maillard, uh, uh, is more of a Maillard smell. It's time to pull these out of the oven and I gotta tell you, they look fantastic. Uh, you'll see the one we put in the cookie sheet pan 
has nice brown, well, you can't see that. You'll see the one we put in the cookie sheet pan has nice brown around the edges, brown on top, nice big holes where the steam has expanded and created big pockets. And you'll see the one we put on our pizza stone actually rose up quite a bit. The difference being the direct heat versus indirect heat uh, here on the stone. 